Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Audible is the destination for thrilling audio entertainment with next listen recommendations to habituate every type of thriller listener. The time is now more than ever to embrace the breathtaking, sinister, and shocking tales that have enthralled you, especially with brand new exclusive thrillers from best-selling authors who are guaranteed to keep you gripped. So, Ronnie, I recently downloaded Squeeze Me by Carl Hyacin, mainly because it shows a martini glass with a snake tail wrapped around it. I mean, what else needs to be said? And I am very excited to listen to it later today. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Do you struggle trying to reach those corner lashes when applying mascara? L'Oreal Paris' new Panorama Mascara catches every lash for corner-to-corner volume. Your sister uh, has been using this, right? She loves it, yes. They sent me some, and I gave it to my sister and my nieces. And actually, I looked at, uh, I saw my niece the other day and was like, your eyelashes, is that the new mascara? She's like, yes, look at them. (laughs) They were like fanned out. I mean, this is a great product. You can buy Panorama Mascara on Amazon today. Want to see life in Panorama with fully fanned out lashes? Now you can with L'Oreal Paris Panorama Mascara that creates corner-to-corner panoramic lash volume. Welding instructor Alex DeClaire knows VR training platforms like ForgeFX help students master their skills. There's a big learning curve with welding. Virtual reality simulates that exact muscle memory that they need. Learn more at meta.com slash metaverse impact. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is part two of a two-part recap. If you're wondering where part one was, well, go check in the feed and be sure to subscribe. Let's get right back into the episode. So then the captain is in the mess with um, Zan- uh, Zany. Zandy. What's wrong with me? I, I wrote Zanya. So <laughs> <Lasagna>. um, <laughs> and they're talking about coming up and down the stairs. He's like, my glutes look great. My girlfriend will be happy. And we've been going together, going all three years now. And she's like, I'm just so content in figuring out myself, you know, like uh, I'm I trying different things. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm catching myself on the inside. <laughs> it's important. Well, part. I meditate every day or... Uh, as they say in, in Turkish, I uh, let me see if it comes to me. Uh, <laughs> if I remember correctly, Higin meditation yap yorum. I masturbation yap mac every day. <laughs> now, yes, that does mean masturbation, but I said it in Turkish, so it's not as problematic. Besides, Ben's fucking his underling. So, let me anyway. tell you something. Darren FSL. Which means breathe deeply. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he's, she's, he's like, yeah, I meditate. And she says, oh, I'm on the crystals now. So that's what I do. And she tells us, when I got divorced after, I had a really good relationship. You know, he was the love of my life and I got hurt. And the only thing that released that pain was through a healer. And for someone else to love you, you need to love yourself. And so I decided to take a pledge of celibacy. Because if you don't want marriage and kids, you can move along now. He's like, oh, I hear that. Good for you. You know, Benny Desari to your collar. All right, catch me outside. I was was going to say that. (laughs) (laughs) Like they were on the same Turkish page. Benny Desari to your collar. By the way, I think one thing that we missed um, in one of the weeks that we did not cover below deck was that Zandi gave us the backstory about her husband wasn't there some wild story that they got married and then he left her to be with like her aunt or something like that or no it was her her okay her father Father. fell in love with his mother or something and the parents 
the parents had an affair that's and right. it ruined the family because they all had to choose sides between the parents and so i guess they got divorced so thanks dad i guess the dad's <laughs> off somewhere being happy fucking typical am i right it's so funny because um they always do that storyline in these cutesy hallmark or disney movies like wouldn't this be so adorable like we bring our parents together but when it happens in real life it's like it just shatters a family <laughs> yeah um so then gary is like oh bobby 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 bob is me gary the, the guy with the penis stuck in the sea bob Have, <laughs> has anybody found my penis yet okay bobby do you have a dryer for jill she needs a dryer and jill's like oh, yeah i want to dry my hair and there's no electric in the bathroom where am i supposed to dry my hair what what, if, what do you just have wet head people on this boat like is is that just what it is like is, is every theme of the night wet hair i'm, I'm sorry you need electricity on the boat. You're welcome. There's there's the, there's some advice to you. Hey, boat, did you hear me? You need electricity in here. That's it. That's it. Nice job on the nugget ice, though. Barbara's like, oh, there's actually a secret hidden drawer. Which, by the way, like, why do they not show that to Jill in the first place? Like, that's not intuitive that there was an outlet in the back of that. Like, you have to open up a drawer and then you have to look in there and see that there's an outlet in the back. So well, you I've, can't show Jill because if they had shown Jill, she would have been like, what? This is supposed to be hidden in a drawer? Yeah, that's that supposed way. to be hidden? I could have found that you by put, opening the thing. It. it was not hidden at all. This is very badly hidden. It should, an outlet goes on a wall. Everyone knows an outlet goes on a wall. Why are they putting it in here? <laughs> it doesn't make sense here. It's like they didn't think. They didn't think. <laughs> Did whoever built this bathroom have a guilty conscience about something? Who hides electricity? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Jill's like, so then Jill's like, Bobby, come on, Bobby, come down to this bathroom. Okay, let me tell you something, Bobby. I've taken yachts before, and every bathroom is loaded with toothbrushes, toothpaste, mouthwash, band-aids, Q-tips. Has anyone ever said that before? Am I the first one to ever break this news to you? Is this like nugget ice? Am I, break am I, am I blowing your mind right now? It's like, no, no one's ever said that, but I, I see what you're saying. And she tells us, I think this lady's annoying and she's too much. Like, you're, freelo you're a freeloading guest who's very demanding. And this is just too much for me. I need another stew just to handle Jill. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> she's like, okay, listen, but you know what? You know what? We, you need Tums. That's what you need in here. You even need Tums, okay? Because there's people who can't handle the water, whatever. That's all, okay? I'm the complainer. I'm sorry. This chocolate's on the pillow, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're wrapped right because you don't want to put like them open because they could melt then you have a chocolate stain on the pillow you don't want to have that they're wrapped so you, you don't want that gary will go to sleep on the chocolate he'll have chocolate on his head i'll be licking gary's head tomorrow have you found gary's penis yet question could you call us when you find that there's no penis size holes in the mattress right gary has a problem this this coming up drama it's like coming up on below deck my burger's cold. <laughs> oh, <boom. laughs> the most inevitable drama with Jill Zarin. That's cold. That's cold. That's cold. Um, so <laughs> we come back. Uh, the deckies getting high on a gas tube. Were they getting high on a gas tube? What was happening? Yeah, Sonny's like, I don't know. It was like, I don't know what it was. I thought it was like gas. I don't know. But they're like, are you getting high? It's like, yeah, bro. I don't know what it was. <laughs> so Barbie is talking to Fraser and Sandy. And she's like, Jill is complaining that she's not talking with toiletries, you guys. And Sandy's like, I will make the guest gift baskets. Catch don't the toiletries worry. outside. <laughs> so then uh, now the chef is making purple cauliflower puree mm -hmm. and planting scallops. And Fraser watches it. Fraser is such a drama queen. Okay, he watches this guy who, by the way, is working alone and doing an incredible job so far. Yeah. Fraser is such a gaslighter. And the fact that he's going to the captain and worrying the captain about it, it's also weird and gaslighty. And I don't know what he's got against this chef, but it's so weird <laughs> because he's doing a beautiful job. And Fraser's like, I'm worried. Purple cauliflower. He's losing his mind. Get the straight jacket. <laughs> Something must be done about this man. <laughs> Yeah, he's acting like it's the wildest thing. Does he think that the that that Anthony actually used like food coloring? Does he not realize that there's actual purple cauliflower in the world? I'm not sure. I don't know. I think he's just trying to make it seem like this chef's crazy because it's giving him drama. But like the guy's dealing with it pretty well, you know? He's like, oh my God, the chef is losing it. Have you seen his kitchen? And then they show the chef up till four in the morning and he's like, but he's still crazy. I think he's just one of, Fraser's just one of those people you're just not gonna win, you know? Yeah. He's always gonna be trying to find someone around him to villainize. Like he tried with Barbie and she like acquiesced or whatever. And so now he's switching over. Mm. 
So uh, then Zandi brings like a little basket with all the toilet trees. Not villainized. Maybe that's too harsh. Sorry. Go ahead. That should <laughs> I was have been trying my to think of a different voice. word. Different word. Um, we don't need one. You know what's a good word? Nugget. Nugget ice. <laughs> you know what's a good word? Kotu Adamalik. I mean, it's still villainized, but it's in Turkish. <laughs> Everyone, I have a big announcement to make. And it is. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. Gather round. I'm Laura E. Diet Cola. Yap my ye ogritim. Which means, of course, wow. I taught them how to make good Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> so Zandy brings Jill a goodie bag with toiletries and just like, ah, oh, look there. Somebody's been scrambling. Good for you. Good for you. You see, I'm making a huge difference on this boat. Okay. So then the um, chef is the chef has to make something. And he has to make something, oh, shrimp cocktail, cocktail sauce. But I guess someone asked for no horseradish in their cocktail. Like, by the way, I am shocked that, like, the 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 preference sheet was so specific that someone wrote down no horseradish. Because it's so, horseradish does not pop up a lot. So then he decides he is going to, he's using wasabi powder instead. But the joke is on him because guess what? Almost all wasabi that we have is actually just horseradish that's dyed green is that true mm -hmm. because actual wasabi is very difficult to grow and it's very very expensive and it's just easier to just serve horseradish that's hmm. green my wow. I, I, I saw a whole thing about this i read a whole thing about it it's wild but wow. it is true and by the way also it's like a it's still it's like horseradish and wasabi do taste very similar well mainly because we're probably just so having hot. Hot. We're having horseradish. Yeah. Did you say horseradish um, okay. is so fucking hot? You know what? Could have been hotter. Could have been hotter. I use horseradish all the time because I make shrimp, my own shrimp cocktail sauce. You know, there's nothing better than going to the store and getting some, you know, pre-boiled shrimp or whatever that's already shucked, not shucked, peeled. And <laughs> then I go home and I say, you know what? This cocktail sauce isn't good enough for me. I'm going to make my own right now within five minutes. You have your own cocktail sauce. You How know, do you make it? It's as spicy as you want. What do you mean? How do you make it? You Tell make me. it with horseradish, lemon, garlic, nugget ice, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Worcestershire, a uh, little chili. I I usually use a little of the uh, Korean uh, chili. What's that called? Like you Good. know, everyone the uses it. Or the go uh, gochujang. Uh, no, no, maybe it's not Korean. You know, the red one that everybody loves. It's Korean. Sriracha. Um, uh, sriracha. Yeah, sriracha, and then uh, some ketchup. Good old fashioned ketchup. You know, and then boom, shake it up. It's better if you let it sit all night, but who's got time for that? Not me. I'll tell you why. Um, you know why? Because I was searching for electricity and it was hidden in a drawer. That's why. Everyone, everyone, Ronnie just taught you how to make good good cocktail sauce. He just taught it. It's good amazing. cocktail sauce. Call it Ronnie sauce. All right? <laughs> because that's, that's what it is. I, I want to uh, say I just taught him how to make. I, I just taught him how to make Diet cocktail sauce. <laughs> I just taught them. I just taught them how to make good Diet Coke. Uh, nice. By the way, horseradish. <laughs> I love horseradish. And um, this is, I'm just, since we're talking about horseradish, I just want to share this. I want to teach you guys how to make good horseradish uh, in the sense that the, uh, like two weeks ago, I went to a dinner party and my friend Sylvia um, made some horseradish infused vodka. And I'm telling you, it was so divine. It was so wonderful. She basically like pureed up some horseradish, like the root and put it into the vodka for like three days. And I think added a little bit of sugar. You could just like sip that vodka. It was fantastic. So that's well, my little pro tip. That's that's how you make good vodka. I just taught everyone how to make good vodka. I taught everyone. <laughs> um, so Captain is texting Yacht Services uh, about a new stew. Have we got anything? Captain, we don't. Oh, I don't know what to tell you. It's busy season. Now, listen, last time it was this busy, the boat was overrun by kangaroos. I punched one right in the goddamn face, and I said, you come on this boat, you're not doing it without a squeegee in your hand. And that was the first time I had a boat that was cleaned by kangaroos. <laughs> okay, Gary, Gary. Okay, put this moisturizer in your head, Gary. Don't be greasy, God. Look at this. Okay, can, guys, I just I just taught Gary how to do good moisturizer. Because you know him. she got free stuff, so now she's like, "Oh, look at all this basket of toiletries." Gary, use them. Let's see. Let's see if anything's going to make you break out before I use them. <laughs> it's like the human rat. Gary, why do you have a sea bob head, in Gary? your pants? Not not in a greasy way, Gary. In a less greasy way. Oh God, Gary. Gary, do we have Gary's penis yet? <laughs> 
<laughs> so um, now Jill's trying to be fun. She's like, okay, everyone, let's conga line through the boat. Let's ha- let's conga line, okay? So they go, and then they're like, they sit around. It's, it's dinner time, and um, they, you know, Fraser serves some fish, but not to, not to Jen. She just has a bowl of sad vegetables and everything. And just like, okay, everyone, I, you know what? I love the presentation of the food, I mean, but I need a small plate of, you know, that's, you know, I need a pl- plate of, of Tums. This would be too yeah. much for me to digest right now. What are you, monsters? <laughs> what are you, monsters? I need Tums, <laughs> all right? Who serves food without sides of Tums, okay? Oh, by the way, Frasier, what's the proper way to eat the shrimp? <laughs> like, what would you say, all right? Because we're having a discussion at the table. And he's like, well, I don't personally like to touch my food, but most people I know would do exactly what you're doing. <laughs> oh, okay, great. So I guess I'm just a toucher. Okay. So I guess I'll just Can we get some tums and just sprinkle just crush them up and sprinkle them into the tomato sauce? I think it would just make it much better. So the chef is talking about how he loves scallops. I, they melt in your mouth, scallop. But someone is vegan. I want her to feel all the other guests feeling. So I just take a tofu and they cook it like all other scallop. She will feel like, oh, I'm at the same party with scallop. She doesn't want to be in the same party. Okay, that's why she's refusing to eat what everybody else eats. Okay, give her a give her a diet coke. That's what I say. <laughs> so then um, upstairs, they're just now they're eating the scallops. Everyone's very happy. Um, Gary is like, "Oh, this carrot, this carrot's amazing." Yeah, well, you're gonna have to use it down there because yours is lost in the sea right now. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so one of their friends has a ponytail and Gary's like, hey, man pony, you want me to tell you who you look who you look like? A Jewish warlock. That's what you look like. Oh, you know what? Spoken like a true grease ball. I told him <laughs> not to put too much of that on his head. Gary, you're blinding the warlock with your head. Okay, put your napkin on top of your head. It's distracting, Gary. You know, Gary, the implication of what you're saying is that warlocks are inherently not Jewish. Okay. <laughs> I thought that was a little... Rude. <laughs> it's a little presumptuous, Gary. It's presumptuous. So, um, succession music is playing for some reason. I'm not really sure because they're just <laughs> making scallops. And the then, succession um, music is very much Jill Zarin. Da da ba be ga re a li be the me echemeta jazan ada phylactic. What you really need is nugget ice. Nugget ice, not block ice. Who does not have Tums in their bathroom? You need Tums. I just taught them how to make good diet. Gary Don't. had some lotion for him. It was free <laughs> and didn't pay for. I had him put it on his head. Now he looks like a grease ball. Oh my God. Gary, why do you put so much grease on your head? You look like a ridiculous person. That is a Jewish <laughs> warlock. Lock. I love Jewish warlocks. I never knew warlocks were not Jewish, but now I do get over here. Man bun and give me a uh, wow that succession <laughs> that's really a that's really a banger. <laughs> were, you doing, were you you were doing the piano part, huh? Yeah. But there, nah. You're back. just sticking to the See, dong. I'm doing that part. You're doing, the, you're doing the lead part. Dong. I'm doing the bon. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so. He's making the chef is making a vegan pina colada flan. How do you make flan without eggs? I don't believe any of this is real. I just don't believe it. I'm a flan maker. You don't make flan without eggs. How? 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 That's see, it's not so hard to turn into Jill to into Jill Zarin. You gotta make a flan <laughs> I without need eggs. Tums. <laughs> I don't know. I need tums after watching this show. It's probably just a block flan. of tofu. He probably put some caramel sauce on a block of tofu and said, Here, yeah. have it. So now the cakes are served, and Jill's like, this was made lo- with love. We can tell. We can tell. There was a compliment, everybody. You're welcome. You know what tastes better than cake? A compliment from me. Chew on that for a while. All right, kids? This, there was a lot of love here. I could, I could tell that this cake got part of it sucked into a sea bob. <laughs> there was a lot of love. 
<laughs> so uh, now Fraser is celebrating the chef in the diary room, in the confessional or whatever. Um, I'm like, you're trying to ruin his life uh, on the outskirts of this, you faker. So then Jill is like, oh, God, listen, we've been sitting two and a half hours. I got to get up now. This is ridiculous. So they go to bed and uh, Barbie is exhausted by Jill, but she has mm -hmm. to stay up and vacuum. And then, uh, by the way, breakfast. I love the irony that Barbie is just like stuck with Jill and being like ground down to a pulp by Jill. Because the truth is, we all know that Jill is Barbie's trajectory. Like that will be Barbie in thirty years, you know. So she should experience it now. Well, Get I will tell you what: I will not be surprised. That's for damn sure. Right? Like that's yeah. what Barbie is going to be in thirty years. She's going to be like, could be better. You know, you could know be better. You know what? You know what my father did? He invented Coca-Cola. Set. <laughs> he invented tell the Coca-Cola vaccine. <laughs> baby me, baby me, I want to tell you something. Tell your father <laughs> that I can teach him how to make good Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now it's gluten-free French toast time for breakfast. Oh, and um, someone asks if they have hot sauce. And Jennifer is like, I have chili oil in my stateroom. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, Jennifer, because you fucking had a pina colada tofu. <laughs> I hope you didn't check your bag. It's all you can eat. What? I said, I hope you didn't check your bag because the chili oil. Could you imagine? She is so insistent that she brings chili oil that she probably had to check her bag for it. I would have been so pissed if I was her flying partner. <laughs> they all probably had to wait for her. So Jill's like, oh my God, you know what? There's no chili sauce and it's such a big boat. They can't be here all the time. I get it. But sometimes if you need hot sauce and you have a hot plate of food, you, you can't wait five minutes because then your food's going to be cold. So it's like, do you even ask for the chili sauce? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like if, if I could ask for it, but it's going to take five minutes, then I don't want to hurt your feelings while you're running up and down the stairs. And then by the time you get back, my eggs are cold. You know, <laughs> who wins here? Let me tell you, nobody, nobody wins. Because let answer. me tell you something. Hot sauce is hot, but it's not going to make cold eggs warm. So then then the guy's like, yeah, and I want a drink and no one's around. So then Fraser like arrives because he's probably been gone for about 30 seconds total. She goes, okay, well, they were running all their food, which all has to be different, which requires more. <laughs> exactly. More platings, etc. So. Okay. You know what, uh, Fraser, can I give you another recommendation for the yacht? Okay. So I have this on my mind, a button for the primary. It's like a doorbell. Except, and I used to have it. I used to have a doorbell that would be in the kitchen. I actually just carry a doorbell and I'm just attached to whatever wall I'm near and I just ring it and see what happens. It was great. <laughs> you know what? Even if you're shopping in a Target, go up to the customer service lady, put a doorbell on her head, and when you need something, <laughs> just smack her in the head. Someone will come help you. That's it. That's what you have to do. You know, you get them off of Amazon. It's very easy, <laughs> Fraser. And he goes, oh, a doorbell in your kitchen? I bet they loved you, darling. And she's like, they did. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Isn't that great? Ding dong. <laughs> he goes, okay, well, we'll always have a crew member around. She goes, you know what? But there isn't. Let's be honest. There's usually, there's not, okay? But these doorbells, they're sticky. You buy them on Amazon, stick them somewhere. Stick yeah, them on the, the stews. Stick them on Bobby. Stick them on you know what? Bob. I would say stick them on Gary's head, but it's too greasy right now. So go over there. That vegan lady with the chili oil in her room, just put it on her. She's never eating anyway. If I need something, I'll just poke her in the head. Fraser's like, Jill is just crawling into my brain and eating my soul. I don't think you like the doorbell idea. I don't think you like that. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, lean closer. You got something in your face. Hold on. Lean closer. Lean closer. Ding Ow. dong. Ding dong. Congratulations. Ow. There's a doorbell on you now. poking me. <laughs> I applied a doorbell onto your face. So um, Fraser runs to the captain. He's like, you will not believe this. She wants to put a doorbell on my face. <laughs> and now they're playing White Lotus music. What the hell? <laughs> ding oh, dong. Just going ding dong. <laughs> Ding dong, it's ding like dong. ding dong, ding dong. <laughs> just going through all of HBO's greatest hits. Next, it's just gonna be <laughs> ding dong, da -da ding dong, da -da ding dong, <laughs> da -da ding dong, ding dong, da -da ding dong, da -da ding dong, Ali Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. CarMax is putting peace of mind back in car shopping by putting you in the driver's seat to find a ride that's right for you. Because at CarMax, we believe you shouldn't just settle for a car. 
you should love your car. That's why every car we sell is CarMax certified quality so you can be sure with upfront pricing that's the same for every customer. So don't settle. Find love at first drive and start shopping now at CarMax.com. CarMax, the way car buying should be. I normally find bras to be so uncomfortable and constricting, but Skims has changed that. You know I love Skims underwear, so I finally tried their bras and Skims has delivered again. Skims bras are worth the hype for the amazing shape and support they give, but what I wasn't expecting was how comfortable they are too. I've tried so many bras in the past, and the main issue that I have is that they weren't supportive enough, to the point where they felt slouchy. I love my Skims wireless form bra because it's so comfortable and supportive. The older I get, the more I care about actually being comfortable in what I wear every day. And with my wireless form bra, I no longer have to sacrifice my comfort for the support I need. Shop Skims Bras at skims.com, now available in 62 sizes, 30A to 46H. Plus, get free shipping on all orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know we sent you. After you place your order, select Podcast in the survey, and select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. At Amica Insurance, we know it's more than just a house. It's your home, the place that's filled with memories. The early days of figuring it out to the later years of still figuring it out. For the place you've put down roots, trust Amica Home Insurance. Amica. Empathy is our best policy. Okay, so now they're packing, packing for the beach picnic, getting ready to do that. And Dylan comes into the mess and Kyle's eating with his hands and dylan's like high five bro high five and he's like i'm eating bro he's like high five i said high five so he high fives him. high five me and then he's like jesus ben comes in and kyle's like jesus my hands are covered in shit and that man just forced me into a into a handshake <laughs> yeah and, and kyle tells us i mean dylan's good lad but i think i've high fived him more than anyone in my entire life mm -hmm. <laughs> He's so mad. It's kind of funny because normally it's the person who high fives someone who has messy hands. It's the person with the clean hands that gets mad. But in this case, Kyle's like, I don't want to, I'm eating. I don't want to get your hand stuff into my gunk that I'm about to lick off my fingers. <laughs> yeah, it's disgusting. Um, and Fraser is now talking to Barbie and he's like, I don't know what to do about this picnic. Surely the chef will mess it up with his psychosis, his utter psychosis. Purple and Barbie's like, <laughs> say it again. Purple cauliflower, could you believe it? <laughs> Purple cauliflower. <laughs> it's a sign everybody understands. So Barbie's like, just take Zandy. I mean, I would. it would be nice to go out, you know what I mean? Because like, I haven't been out in a minute, but I mean, I guess take her. And he's like, oh God, there's no way you can do it. I need you at the table. Simply no one else understands forks the way you do. And you're also very dumb and I don't trust you around Sandy things. It's like, okay. Hmm. So then Dylan's oh my god, I hope Dylan finds a Oh, Dylan's working out. Thank God he's doing some pull-ups off of something. Thank God. So then Jill and Melinda are laying out and Barbie passes by. So Jill's like, uh, Barbie, okay, I want to ask you something. Food. Not the service, the food. I know I said on the request sheet I wanted food out all day. Can we get some food out all day? And Barbie's like, um, yeah, we'll make sure there's always snacks in the bar for you. Thank you. By the way, I don't think that's unreasonable. I think that if you're on a super yacht, there should always be snacks on the on the bar. Um, I mean, yeah, I think that's a, that one. I give that one to Jill. Doorbell unreasonable, uh, snacks reasonable. Always. Have I mean, snacks. look, maybe some nuts or something. Yeah, but some candies. You know, three meals a day. Plus, you want me to keep up with all of your An different kinds of snacks because you have to remember this is not just snacks. This is vegan, gluten free, no, no raw fish, no shellfish, no dairy. No, you have to have something different for each of the fucking I think you can put out potato, people, I, you know. You know like in you know, on airlines they sometimes will like they'll just put their they'll go through with their like snacks and then they put the basket like in the back and if you get if you're hungry you just go up and you get a, a snack. I think that's yeah. what it should be like. See, mm. now I'm turning to Jill Zarin. Let me give you some let me give you some advice. This is what you do. You put out a basket, you put some chips in it, you put some gluten-free chips, you put some gluten chips, you put a little bit of everything for everyone, some tums, you have it right there. You're fine. Just letting you know for the next Well, if charter. that's what it is, then that's fine. If it's a basket. But, yeah. uh, you know, on a super yacht, I think they want more than a basket, to which I say, go fuck yourselves, all of you. All of you <laughs> have pushed me too far already. Well, you know what? That's so, why I have to be pushy, because you'll be satisfied. 
<laughs> That's yeah, what you know says. what? <laughs> I'm a little pushy, but guess what? Who's satisfied? Everybody here. Ding dong. <laughs> it's funny. Watch her run. Watch her run. <laughs> so good. So then um, Ben at radio is Dylan to bring the tender around. Dylan's like, let's do it. I'm like, oh, God. He's like slapping, <laughs> high-fiving a fish in the water. It's like, he's like a puppy. You always have to throw the bowl for him. So I think that's the best way, by the way, to describe Dylan. So then um, the chef is plating lunch and he's got all well, these he, different kinds of things he has to make, all these different cheeseburgers. And so Barbie's working with him. He, she's the waiter. So he's well, like, all right. I, I have to say, so the oh. options here that he's going to give are a regular cheeseburger. And then there's like a gluten-free bun, a regular bun and then a lettuce wrap, and then some have cheese, some don't have, but like there's just variations. So Barbie goes up there and she takes everyone's order. And I'm like, is she not going to write any of this down? Well, they all give their different, you know, variations on the cheeseburger. I was like, this is not right. You have to write it down. And sure enough, she fucks it all up. Oh, doesn't she write it down? No, she comes downstairs and she starts writing it on the whiteboard. Oh, because I, I thought she said, do you have a pen or something when he was saying all the different options? But maybe he maybe didn't I missed have a pen. it. <laughs> maybe he didn't have a pen. Or maybe but, I didn't um, see her writing something it down. It seems like it shouldn't it. be that hard because it's cheeseburgers. But it is hard because there's a million things. Now, on the other hand, he has a list. You have two gluten-free people. You have one person who doesn't have this. Like, he kind of has a list. So I wouldn't even give them the option. I would say, here's the gluten-free ones. Here's the completely bread free one, and here's the vegan one because she goes up and gives them options, and then they all fuck it up because they're like, Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll try gluten free. Yeah, that'll be a fun experiment. So have him make three gluten free. Well, now he's fucked because he wasn't prepared to. So now it's just, it becomes a cluster basically. She writes it down in a disorganized way on the whiteboard, and on top of that, she also messes up. And he is, he has dyslexia. And so it's just like overwhelming and he can't process and he just gets lost. Yeah. Cause she writes literal paragraphs on this board. So he's staring yeah. at like this big jumble of words and he's like, oh my God. So he starts sweating and then he, you see him just kind of shut down where he's like, uh oh, <laughs> you just see him just like start playing elevator music in his mind and going yeah. through the he paces does not. to just get through it. Right. Yeah. He's like, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. So of course it gets all messed up and so uh barbie um barbie of course brings the wrong thing upstairs and they wanted a lettuce wrap there was no lettuce wrap and just like you know what it's fine if he doesn't have it i'll do, you know i'll do something else it's you know but this is not good i mean look i'm not gonna go into anaphylactic shock but i am gonna go into hunger shock okay can i ring hold on does this does this burger have a doorbell on it can i ring this doorbell can i ring this burger no let me tell you who they wouldn't serve the wrong burger to Ahmadinejad. <laughs> All right. I'm not even kidding with that. I know him. I know him. So, you know, so she goes down. She's like, oh, my gosh. Uh, so Jill goes, okay, my burger's cold. Gary, 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 it's your burger. Gary's co burger's cold, too. Anyone else? Tell the truth now. Tell the truth. Tell them. They don't mind. They don't mind. Be honest. <laughs> Tell the you know what waiters love? Honesty. Okay? <laughs> There's a moment of truth. Who's Okay, no? Cold, 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 lukewarm. Okay. You got two cold. Your hair could be warm. moisturized. Okay. Any any other truths to give her? She's here. She's here. Ding dong. Other ding times? dong. Ding dong. You look better in, in knee highs. Okay. Tell them. It's anyway. fine. She needs to know. They need to know. They need, this is how they improve. <laughs> they like it. So then uh Zandy takes the burgers down to switch them out. So meanwhile, Fraser and Sonny are at the beach. And um, Fraser is asking about the relationship with Ben. And he's like, do you have feelings for Ben? Oh, brilliant, wonderful. And she's like, um, yeah, but you know who thinks otherwise? Sabrina. Oh, oh God, you're really going to try and make Sabrina happen? You're yeah. not interesting enough as Sunny. You can't <laughs> make Sabrina happen. Make Sunny happen first, okay? Let's get an original personality before we add another personality. Also, if you're okay. going to have an alter ego, why do you not name your alter ego Stormy? If you're Sunny, why not have Sunny and Stormy? Like, it just makes sense. At least make it a good alter ego. Because I so, think she thinks she's being cute with the witch, right? Like Sabrina the Teenage Witch or whatever. I don't know. I'm guessing. Because who picks Sabrina as the name for their witch? Yeah. I mean, their inner... Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Sunny bugs me because of her like for Ben. I'm over yeah. it. So, um, <gasps> ben... oh my God. Look what I just got. What? You know what I love more than anything in the world? To be flirted with by spam bots. Did you look get at this Coke? hot lady who's flirting with me. Do you see her? Oh, wow. Look at her. She's gorgeous. She said, Hey there, how have you been? I'm going to say, 
I've been great. I've really missed you. You look so beautiful as always. What's been going on over there? Question mark. Why did you stop calling me? Okay. Um, my The spam that I get these days is... Time is running out, Ben, and this is the most urgent moment. We need you to donate to Joseph Biden. I'm like, okay, relax. I already donated. I get those from Planned Parenthood all the time. Every time. Everything. It's like, the time is now. You must vote for Joni Jeremond for school council. I'm like, I don't fucking care who's on the school council. <laughs> Okay, so um, now she's talking about Sabrina, her inner demon or whatever. And um, he's like, so is this Sabrina? Is she always around? Does she like purple cauliflower? Tell me the truth. And she's like, oh, no, just tequila. And he goes, oh, so she's your ugly stepsister, is she? That was rude. <laughs> An ugly shame Sabrina. Like, now you got me standing up for Sabrina, dude. <laughs> she's like, it's still, like, physically it's the same person as me, so... <laughs> Just like, I cannot believe he just called me ugly. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Where's the food? You know, you know what they should have done? A buffet. A buffet. You know what? They're going to hate me. They're going to hate me. But I don't care. Make it better. Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding dong. <laughs> ding dong. Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding 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 dong. <laughs> uh, so Zandy goes to the galley and um, she's like, what is going on here? And he's like, I don't, uh, I don't know. It is so hard to understand everything. Look at this board. <laughs> And she's like, well, Captain, is gonna, Captain, there's going to be complaints about lunch because the menu wasn't converted properly. And so Barbie comes in because Andy's yeah. totally throwing her under the bus. And Barbie's like, yeah, I ran everything extremely disorganized and it came out because it, it was a disaster. I'm sorry. I take responsibility. He's like, should I talk to him? Listen, I'm going to solve everything in this episode by marching up there and doing nothing, as we're going to see soon. <laughs> I know. So Jill's like, you know what? My instinct was not to be surprised and to know all the meals in advance. Because then I would, could make adjustments and then make it better, you know? And so Captain comes up and goes, so, uh, there's you've eaten. How was it? All right. Good job. All right. Guess what? I uh, just heard about this thing about nugget ice and it makes really good diet cake. So I'm going to go downstairs and give it a try. <laughs> Bye. Solved everything. Oh, I solved everything down there. <laughs> um, the, the Captain really shouldn't be bothered with this. Oh, the Captain, come here. You've got something on your forehead. Ow! Ding dong. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay. Got, nugget busy seviorum. I love nugget ice. <laughs> okay, I got a response from this lady. Sorry, I've been too busy, and we need to know each other better before we make a call. Do you still remember, right, Zach? Yes, of course I remember. I wouldn't forget. When do you want to <laughs> Wait, call? You just, no, you should say, I, I wouldn't. Of course I would never forget when we robbed that bank together. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm going to see if I can get her on the phone. Yeah. Or them on the phone. Her on the phone. I don't know. Yes, of course I remember. I wouldn't forget. When do you want to call? Oh, my God. I think I it's going to be a thing. Me right now. I feel like it's going to be something where, like, you get tricked into, like, making a call to, like, a number that charges you $45 or something like that. Oh, I'll pay it to talk to her. <laughs> That's a write-off. Like, it's I'm happening love. on the podcast. <laughs> I'm literally in love. Okay. Ask so, her what she thinks about nugget ice. How to, or ask her what's the best way to make a good Diet Coke. <laughs> so, so sorry to bother you. I just want to make sure that you're my friend, Zach or not. May I know your last name? Pringle, I'll say. <laughs> Pringle. <laughs> so here's the thing. Why are they, are you're supposed to say, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not that person. And then they say, well, should we speak anyway? Is that what you're supposed to do? Because this is where I lose them all the time. I pretend that I do remember them. I don't know what the next step is supposed to be. they stop talking to me. I think I'm the only person to get spammers to stop talking well, to me. Well, I think that if you say my last name is Pringle, we know that Pringle is a, is a viable last name because of Bravo, but uh, she may think, she's like, oh, he's fucking with me. I love when spammers get upset when you fuck with them in return. But they know I'm fucking with them because she's, sp she's scamming me, so... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, whatever. I'm my. I don't have as much of a boner. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you that it's made me think too much. They need to work on their grift a little bit more. I'm ding like dong, sad. ding dong, ding I dong, want, ding I dong, ding scammed. dong. Okay, so Kyle is eating chips and he's watching Dylan wash <laughs> ham. <laughs> this in the is sink. the scene. Sheets of ham. Cut. Like he has little ham from like Oscar Mayer or whatever you get in Grenada, and he has two slices that he's rinsing. 
under the water. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, maybe he wants to reduce some of the sodium. I don't know, like, because you do wash things like anchovies, but ham isn't stored in, like, salty oil. So Kyle's like, why are you washing that ham? And he's like, he's like, are you washing that ham? He's like, yes. It's like, what the fuck? I always wash it because there's fat residue. I just want, I just want protein. I don't want the fat residue from the ham. You're eating a Girl. pig. You fucking moron. Girl, Are you fucking if you crazy? think that's you... going to be the thing that makes or breaks your, your diet is like the 0. 0.000001 grams of fat that may or may not be on the edge of that ham, sir. You, you, have, you literally have actually need problem. to check yourself in somewhere. I just like wish I, I was on that boat so I could be like, oh, my God, Dylan, you look great. So I love that you're deciding to gain a little weight in your butt section. It looks so good on you. Good for you. I, it's actually alarming. It, it actually is. It, it really does appear like an eating disorder at this point. I don't think they're called eating disorders when they're for when they're people working out too much. <laughs> they're called. I think it's people look fondly. People look. Um, West people Hollywood respect itis. that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like if he was washing peanut M&Ms off in a sink, then people would be like eating disorder. I mean, been there. Am I right? But um, <laughs> when it's when it's Dylan. It's Hand considered bath. winning something. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's kind of terrifying. So then um, Jill's like, okay, you know what? I should talk to the chef. When should I do it? Should I talk to him now? Get Melinda. Get, get Melinda. She's the primary. You know what? I'm going to let Melinda talk. And uh, she, I'm just going to sit there and watch Melinda talk to the chef. Get him up here. Get him up here. <laughs> Ding dong. Ding dong. <laughs> Melinda's a little quiet these days because she maybe, you know, you know, she's she is a pincushion for her father, essentially. She tries out all the vaccines. So... <laughs> So, um, so then Captain and, and Melinda uh, hasn't and been the same since she was injected with the avian bird flu, but you know what? It did save <laughs> thousands of people, R right? Melinda, Melinda, you're walking backwards. Melinda, come here. <laughs> Ding dong, Melinda. Melinda's very, she's, uh, she's non raw fish curious at the moment. So if we can give her a moment. <laughs> One of the side effects of, of Moderna is you want to experiment with fish, but it's got to be cooked. Oh. So, Mullen, so they, <laughs> they, they go, so Anthony and, and Captain go to meet with Jill and Melinda to just discuss the menu. Captain is there. Because he's like, oh, I'm going to be there. If they're going to talk to you, oh, I'm going to be there as well. I was like, okay. So here he comes marching up again. Let's see what difference this makes. Yeah. So, uh, okay, Melinda, I'm going to have to be your mommy right now. Okay, here we go. All right. Well, thank you so much for having us. Um, you guys are all enjoying your really good diet cokes you've been having since I taught you how to make them. Okay, good. I I'm glad to hear that. He's like, yeah, well, I'd love to talk about uh, I'd love uh, Chef, would you say something? Yes, I would love to talk about dinner. She's like, okay, so here's what I would love. I would love to hear what you're planning because I don't want to sign me what you're doing. I was wondering this. Can I add a doorbell to your stock pot? <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm planning on curry and the vegetarian, oh, the vegan option would be tofu pad thai. And she goes, oh, do you know what? Pad thai? Could you do chicken pad thai? <laughs> I have chicken, but could you make it vegan pick chicken pad thai? Not and I want chicken. actual chicken. I just want, I want the chicken to have been a vegan. Does that make sense? <laughs> Melinda does not eat raw chicken. In fact, none of us do. So could you make sure there's not raw chicken? Thank you very much. Melinda doesn't want a meat eating chicken. So if it's possible to get me a vegan chicken, that would be great. Okay. <laughs> Um, is it possible to have sushi at the bar for when we come down? Can we just get like some sushi up there? He's like, oh, oh absolutely. absolutely. I can do uh, tuna and uh, wahoo fish. She's like, great. And you know what? If Do you have crudite? Yes, the vegetables. Okay, I would love that. I don't eat sushi. The sushi is disgusting. But I, I need something to pick at, you know, besides <laughs> you. That's not human. That would be great. Yeah, so uh, what I, just to, to reiterate, I'd like to make a demand that you put out food for other people, but not for me. And I just want to have some little carrots on the side. So make sure the food for the other people... Only caters to my taste, though. <laughs> Not to their taste. Thanks. I'm so glad I let Melinda say all that. Okay. And so he's like, uh, I think the primary is okay with her friend taking over the boat. She's like, Captain, taking over the ship. And the captain's like, glad I was here for this. And then he walks off. <laughs> so then the guests take the tender to the beach, and it's Pickleball Beach. And uh, he's like, oh, I've missed you so much, guests. Biggest lie I've ever told. Well, actually, it's not true. Today, I saw the chef and I said, you look completely non-psychotic today, chef. <laughs> and I did, then I added, purple cauliflower, a normal person's brassicas. <laughs> so Ben's like, 
Well, I've played a little tennis over the years with a couple of Grand Slam champions, if I don't say so myself. And then we see flashbacks of him playing with Gigi Fernandez, who's like, fuck you, I just beat you, poor boy. <laughs> so then Barbie calls her friend Brittany, because of course, Barbie and Brittany are going to be friends. I think even if they have nothing in common, just their names. Like, oh my God, your name is Brittany? My name is Barbie. We have to be friends. <laughs> Do you know about good Diet Coke? So she's like... I fucking hate this housewife so much. And then, like, the second stew, who isn't, like, a second stew at all, couldn't even handle the situation. She was, like, completely frazzled. Meanwhile, like, okay. Zandi is so calm. She just sits there with that, like, sort of pleasant smile on her face. Like, like she, you know, she has a I hate you smile at all times. And Barbie is, like, running around so frantically, the cameraman cannot pick catch. Like, ca- catch her outside. There's one, po- one point where Barbie comes running down the hallway and then she turns around and goes up a staircase, and the camera cannot track her. It's like watching a football game where the camera can't follow the football. She's <laughs> the one who's frantic. I know, but you know that whole like making yourself the hero of the story thing, and we yeah. all do it. Man, Barbie really takes it to a t- to a different level. She's like, basically, I hate this fucking boat. It was like sinking, and so like I was basically the the life raft. Like I'm the only one who knows how to swim. So like I literally saved everybody while I held a screwdriver and bolted the boat back together and then put everybody back. I mean, we're a live thing. I'm in the news here. Do you get the news here? Oh, it's crazy. I'm in it. <laughs> it's nuts. Is that okay? He hasn't called me back. He's still <laughs> extremely wealthy, right? Okay. Tell him I haven't drank a Pepsi. Okay. Talk to you later, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Zandy tells Fraser on the beach that Barbie got all the or- orders wrong. And Fraser's like, perfect, absolutely perfect. And um, yeah, they're just like, they're on the beach setting up and everything. And so Fraser goes up to Jill and he's like, I just want to apologize, Jill. And if you do want to stick a doorbell on my forehead, I will accept it now. She's like, no, don't be sorry. But if you're there, you know, and you're anticipating service and half the food comes out and the other half doesn't come out, what are you supposed to do, you know? I told everyone, be honest. Is it cold? Is it cold? Is it cold? We got we have three lukewarms there. That's all I'm saying. You know what? Mine comes out cold. His comes out cold. And that's when we knew something's wrong. Now, I don't know what it is, but something happened. Did it not? Did it not happen? Did something bad not happen, Frasia? Tell me the truth, Frasia. Okay? I like the truth. And he's like, I heard the order was taken wrong. Just there. All right, so no big deal. Now I know. You know what? <laughs> and now you know. You do it once, and she'll never do that again. Ding dong, ding dong. Am I right? Put a ding dong. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Jill just wants to know the backstory. She just wants to know all the gossip. You know, and I'm like that too. I'll go onto a plane, and I'll see like two people having an issue. Like I'll see like someone trying to put like a bag in an overhead compartment. It doesn't fit, and then like the stew is like talking to the person about the bag, and I can't hear them, but I know they're having discussion, and I'm like. What, what are they saying? Where are they going to have to put their bag? They have to put it in the back. They have to put it in the back. They have to check it. Like, and then they check it. I'm like, I knew it. They had to check it. They had to check it. They had to check it. I get way too involved in this stupid shit. And Jill does the exact same thing. She's just verbal about it. I keep it on the inside. And she thinks she's always solved a mystery. You know, like, oh, you know what? The food didn't come out. Let me guess. There was a problem. I knew it. I knew there was a problem. Yeah, there was a problem. The food didn't come out. What the? Of course Gary, there was. Did you you hear? didn't just solve did anything. Hear? Gary, Gary, did you hear? She got the order wrong. That's why it happened. That's why. I told why. you. That's I told why. you. I told, I told everyone you. here. I knew it. You know what I said to Melinda? They got something wrong. And Melinda just looked at me like with a stupid face and didn't say anything. And I said, don't say anything, Melinda. And she didn't. And I said, you know what? I told you not to and you didn't. Good for you. Yeah. Things wrong. You win. You know? And you know what? You know what? It's like the time I said to Melinda, I said, I think something's wrong with your vaccine. And she said, what are you talking about? I said, the needle's still in your arm. And you've got it three days ago. You got to get that checked out. She got it out. I was right. They left the needle in there. But that's all. I just needed to know. They just have to fix it. <laughs> Okay, so now Barbie is running all over the boat, and she's like, this situation is fucked. And then it cuts back and forth (laughs) between her in a frantic mode and then the guests going through their guided meditation that Jin, the fucking chili oil in her purse lady, is guiding them through. And um, send yourself grace. Send yourself courage. Send yourself grace and courage. Always keep keep chili oil in your purse, guys, okay? And then it cuts to Barbie like, fuck you guys for making me do this myself. Fuck you guys. Um, You know what, like, again, most boats that we've seen on the show, there's three sues, and this is pretty normal. So, um, uh, she's Barbie's really mad because yeah, they're you know Zandy and Fraser are out there doing yoga, but they're not doing just yoga. They're also serving. They're they're the ones who have to deal with this like high maintenance crew. So then now the guests are ready to go back, and um, Dylan is trying to 
trying to get like energy. He's doing like a pep talk in front of a mirror. It's like, come on, come on, come on, man. You can do it. High five. High five yourself. High five. He slaps himself. He's like, ow. He slaps himself on the face. This guy's crazy. So then Fraser and Barbie, uh, Barbie's like, oh my God, like I didn't know she wasn't coming back from the beach. I mean, I knew she was going to the beach. I didn't know she was staying there. Cause like I was running around at every single guest room, but like then I fucked that up. And like I fucked lunch up. You know what I mean? Like I know that I did. And he's like, well, as long as you don't do it again, we're still going. We're still our lives. And we'll just go until we kill ourselves, I suppose. <laughs> so Zandy's like steaming in the, in the, like steaming clothing and barbara's like um please tell me we have a napkin and she's like no no well who did it while i was gone there are no napkins around because well um like i need a napkin and and zandy's like well i know we don't have people is what i'm saying and so you can you can iron a napkin i'm pretty sure and so barbie's like all mad that she has to actually press a small square of fabric yeah and um you know you got to do it and she's like am i supposed to be everybody's nanny on the boat why don't you am i your personal assistant you can iron you can iron yourself cash me out napkin side princess <laughs> so then uh fraser is taking up a huge plate of sushi to the bar now this is a massive amount of work okay sushi is not easy to make this is a massive serving thing of sushi right and the crudite so melinda goes are there any without fish it's raw fish and she's pissed and she's telling her husband melinda fuck you dude you were sitting there coming up with this menu and you yes. didn't think to say i don't eat any of that stuff say what you want melinda okay? i know she literally said nothing that literally <sighs> jill zarin said put out some tuna and some this and wahoo put up tuna and wahoo sushi and or he says tuna and wahoo and so that's great and melinda just sits there just sits there and now all probably of a sudden thinking, she has an issue probably thinking she goes to some american sushi place that serves her baked fish on the thing but you have to say sushi is not generally served baked for you melinda Fucking. i mean it. you're having a meeting you're having a meeting for the menu so like voice what you want don't do the thing where you're just hoping that they fall into a trap and then like mess up and that way you can complain about it like i have to say i actually respect jill zarin more because jill zarin said exactly what she wanted and what she needed and she put it out there. She said, just make this for me. And they did. Yeah, so Linda's a real fucker. I'll tell you that. So, uh, and also the captain is annoying in this situation too, because he insisted on being there, that like, I'm going to be there. To, so there's no miscommunication. If they're talking while a chef, I'm going to be right. So he knows what went down, right? Mm -hmm. And so he, is, Fraser is like, oh my God, shit show, disaster, insane person in the kitchen. Listen, Captain, there's no vegetarian option on the sushi. And he goes, oh, there's chef, there's no vegetarian option. Yeah, you were there. They didn't ask for that. Now, should the chef have I'm about guessed? To say, Probably. The flip side is the flip side is that they're still the, as a chef. He should have s still said, "Oh, I have to make something for the primary, so that way she has something to eat beyond the crudités." He probably should have had the forethought to say, even if she's sitting right here and literally not telling me that she wants that, I should probably guess that she's going to want to, even if she's not hungry right this second, or something like that. Yes, but. They were sitting there literally going every over every single thing and they not only okayed it, it's what they asked for. So for the captain to be like, why isn't there a vegetarian option? Were you listening? You were standing right there, sir. <laughs> well, what's happening is Jill's rattling our cage too much and we need to focus on the primary. The primary is number one. It's a huge fuck up and it's and it's his fuck up. He's out of his depth and we're gonna he's gonna include and I can't afford these mistakes anymore. Well, I don't know. You can't find someone to unclog a goddamn toilet at this point. So I don't suggest firing the chef. You know what I mean? No, I think get a stew before we uh, fire the chef. Yeah, uh, pretty crazy. Wow. This is our first two part below deck in a little bit. Or maybe we just did a two part below deck. I, I don't we just remember did, what huh? we do is two parts, but this is <laughs> this well, was really a big one. Listen, it's Jill Zarin, so you know you're gonna have to you're gonna get two parts out of a Jill Zarin episode. Yeah, that's a banner that's a banner episode for us guys. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. This was super fun. Um 
you know, we love you guys. Thanks for being with us. We uh, are doing <laughs> our Game of Thrones bonus this week, so go check that out. Um, we're also we also have Crappy Hour every week. It's every other Monday at five thirty p.m. Pacific time. Instagram live show, super fun, and uh, go get tickets for our live shows and our videos, at Patreon, everything like that over at WatchWhatCrappens.com. And we will talk to you next time. Okay, bye. bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trot. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. We forever love Ava. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish. It's Jen Plish. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo. Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a can. And Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com slash survey. When you earn your degree online at Arizona State University, you get everything the nation's most innovative university has to offer. The same internationally recognized faculty, the same nationally ranked programs, the same degree. Learn more at asuonline.asu.edu.